The Great Reset, Part 1. Earlier in the year, at, from the beginning of the crisis through to about three months ago, i done several videos dealing with very important issues that are connected to COVID-19. And I want to start and do another one here. We've taken a break for three months. But I want to come back and just give you this exhortation on the Great Reset, Part 1. I believe that most of what we're seeing and focusing on and getting angry over throughout this year already is actually a smokescreen. Most of what is called COVID-19, the race rats that followed it, the election in America that everyone is getting so heated about, looking to China, our socialism, our vaccine, None of these are the real issue of what's happening to our world in 2020. I believe all of this is a smokescreen to hide us or to obscure us seeing clearly what is actually happening and what is going to happen over the next year and a half. I pray and I hope that this message here will begin to open your eyes to see what the real issue is and that all of these other things are mere smoke to distract us that we won't understand and won't be able to apply the scriptures to what is actually happening. So this first part, we may do a second or third part, but the Great Reset, part one, I want to explain to you what the Great Reset is. I taught this to our church, local church, two months ago, and I've felt for several weeks it's important to let our friends elsewhere know about this so you understand what is being planned for our world and how all of the events of this year are being used. Let me take you back one year to October 2019 to the city of New York, an event that is called or was called Event 201, a global pandemic exercise. It was a war game response to a global virus outbreak. It was a scenario set during the months of November and December last year. Gathered in a small room was a round table group of 15 people from different countries and organizations. Those 15 individuals represented the United Nations, the Bill Gates Foundation, the World Bank, the CIA, John Hopkins School of Medicine, UPS Foundation, Lufthansa Airlines, the Marriott Hotels, the US Center for Disease Control and Prevention, and last but not least, the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention, as well as a small group of invited guests. This almost went unnoticed at the time, and yet many have pointed back to it since then. What was the scenario that they were playing out? And they said it was an imaginary, imaginary scenario that they thought was very likely to take place. So all of them gathered together to play through to decide what they would do in that scenario. What was it? It was a new coronavirus beginning in pigs, but spreading to humans. It would be a respiratory illness with symptoms ranging from mild flu-like symptoms through to severe pneumonia, with the sickest needing intensive care. They depicted that it would begin small and be controllable at first, but within six months, 10 million cases would be diagnosed worldwide, with 65 million dying during the first 18 months, the first year and a half. They talked through the process of if this imaginary coronavirus did hit. Remember this just one year ago that they were talking about this. They said if it w did hit, there would be a travel ban. They talked through the potential collapse of the health system, a growing financial crisis with the global economy going into free fall. They talk through about the stock market plummeting, leading to consequences that would last for maybe a decade. They actually went through several messages, and I've listened thoroughly to them. And within it, they raised certain concerns. Their main concerns were concerning disinformation and misinformation. In other words, they talk through about limiting internet uh, access or shutting down the internet. They talked about censoring the internet, controlling it, and centralizing all information in the case 
of a coronavirus breaking out worldwide. They talk through about inflicting penalties, including arrests or fines, if anyone spread information that was not in line with their organisations. They talk through how social media would uh, deal with this, deleting accounts. But they finally concluded that closing down the internet access would only feed into conspiracy theories. So their answer was flood the zone with their own centralized message. They even talked through about bringing in uh, faith-based organizations, religious groups, to support and to promote their agenda. They talked through about those that were anti-vaccination and how this growing trend, how they would deal with it, how to address the idea that the coronavirus was a man-centered or created um, illness. And they also focused on saying that the World Health Organization must be the center of all information worldwide for governments given advice on how to respond on, a, light, on a, a large scale. They also talked about the potential of riots in the streets that would lead to mar martial law, and that the only way to solve the problems that would arise would be by global businessmen and governmental leaders working together hand in hand. They would have to centralize the flow of information and respond unitedly. They called on tech giants like Google, Facebook, Twitter, Microsoft, Apple and Amazon to lead by example. Of course, one year ago in October, this was only a make-believe imaginary scenario. Or was it? The three uh, organizations that created it and planned it and put this into operation last October. Listen, the John Hopkins Center for Health and Security. Secondly, the World Economic Forum. And third of all, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Now I here for a moment want to concentrate on the World Economic Forum. They were one of the three groups behind organizing that entire scenario last year. Either they were prophets or else they've moved in, as I'm going to show you, to make full use of this remarkable situation this year. What is the World Economic Forum? I'm sure most of you do not know, but I want to explain it because I believe it's so, so important in an hour, even as Christians, that we understand what is happening in our world and what is about to happen in the year to come, potentially. The World Economic Forum was founded in 1971, by Professor Klaus Schwab. He was born in Germany in 1938 and he is now a man of 82 years old. Every year in January in Davos, Switzerland, he organizes a gathering of about 3,000 people for five days. The member of the World Economic Forum, those who support it and stand with it, um, uh, involve the leaders of the world's largest cooperations. In fact, the world's leading thousand companies are actually involved in the World Economic Forum each year. Also, international political leaders pull behind it are, and are in attendance there. Also, economic leaders like the leaders of the global banks and the International Mon Monetary Fund. You also get many celebrity, celebrities uh, being involved in it, like Bono of U2 here in Ireland, who will speak out on political and economic issues, and he's there as a mere face to do that. Also, many journalists from all of our nations will be involved with this. In January 2020, at the beginning of this year, Representatives from 117 countries, representing 121 nationalities, gathered in Davos for the 50th anniversary of the World Economic Forum. They invited President Trump to speak to them, and although he spoke contrary to most of their ideals, yet because of being such a vital person, they had him there. The World Economic Forum is fully backed 
by all the main global organizations. The United Nations are fully behind it. The, the European Union, the International Monetary Fund, all of these groups fully back the, the, this forum. And it is vital in our world. And that's why I want you to know a little bit about it. Professor Klaus Schwab released his message, vision, and all that he was seeking to accomplish in the year 2016. Davos that year in 2016 was called the Fourth Industrial Revolution. He also released a book by the same title. And he began to explain what the Fourth Industrial Revolution was. Listen to what he said. It is characterized by a fusion of technologies that is blurring the lines between the physical, the digital, and the biological spheres. In other words, what he is saying here is that AI, artificial intelligence, the whole realm of worldwide internet is merging with humans. He actually believes that AI is going to merge with humanity itself and that even the internet is going to be connected into biology. This is what the fourth industrial revolution is or what it will spark or where it will lead to. He promoted that this new industrial revolution is going to challenge that idea of what it actually means to be human itself. He says it will happen fast at breathtaking speed, like a tsunami. Everything is going to be digitalized. Our world is going to totally change. Remember, this is the organization and the man behind organizing one year ago a scenario that we have just passed through in the past year. I do not take this lightly when men like this speak. You see, he said that everything is going to get digitalized. This is their plan. And four years ago, he released this pattern and plan for governments and businessmen to work together on it. He talks in his book about digitalizing the entire education system. How do you do that? You move it away from the hands of individual teachers in the classroom to be in a computerized system online where you are taught by more than just a local teacher. He says that it Every area is going to get digitalized. The public sector, all jobs, the health system, and even government. With government, everything within that nation is going to begin to unify. All the sex sectors through a digitalized online system is going to be united and molded into a unified system. This is what the fourth industrial revolution is. It will affect income. And involved with all of this will be a new worldwide wealth distribution. He believes that internet is vital to what is going to happen and that everything is going to be forced online. We will go cashless, that people will begin working from home. Friends, this wasn't released this year. This was four years ago. He put all of his thoughts, all of his ideas in a book. And every year, all the top governments... Uh, leaders and politicians and businessmen gather to hear the latest message of the World Economic Forum. Well, that same year at Davos in January 2016, he introduced this master plan for the fourth industrial revolution and where we're going to head to. He spoke also at the World Government Forum, spreading these same ideas. And he also coined more recently, just last year, a new term called globalization 4.0. That term was actually coined to signal the coming shift in globalized structures. Everything is going to be globalized and digitalized. This is their plan. In fact, to bring all of this in, they said we need a time, we need an opportunity in which to remold change. And what better opportunity than 2020? Never have they had a better opportunity than now. And to make a massive change than in this year. They also said 
whatever it takes, we're going to bring about this change to move society forward. Even governments are going to be digitalized. Everything will be centralized. Everything will come under singular influence. Now, let me take you a bit further here. Just to last year, to June 2019, at the United Nations headquarters in the city of New York, there was a meeting between two leaders of two organizations. The United Nations Secretary General met with Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum and they signed a contract at that meeting. And in fact, this is the fourth industrial revolution. It is the union of the World Economic Fo Forum of the whole business realm with the UN, the political uh, uh, institution that that is so influ influential in our world. They, that actual document that they signed is called the Strategic Partnership Framework. It is a new coming together to create a new social contract. And if you know anything about this, they are redefining what it means to be nations, what it means to be a society, and how individuals actually respond to governmental or uh, business institutions. So they're redefining how our entire world operates. When you get an organization like the World Economic Forum signing a covenant with the United Nations, it is big. It is major. And it says, listen further here. It says that this was signed to accelerate or to speed up the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The partnership identifies <coughs> six areas of focus. Listen to what they are. Number one, financing the 2030 Agenda. Number two, climate change. Number three, health. Number four, digital cooperation. Number five, gender equality and the empowerment of women. Number six, education and skills. This document signed between a business organization and a governmental organization was agreeing on this to speed everything up. This is the fourth industrial revolution. Experts watching this signed agreement got very disturbed. They said it formalizes a disturbing cooperate capture of the UN or the businessmen moving in to influence the biggest global political institution of our day. They went on to say it moves the world dangerously towards a privatized and undemocratic global governance. A very dangerous thing. In other words, power is moving towards the World Economic Forum and away from individual nations and countries. And oh, have we seen it this year. Business leaders gain power with the United Nations. It's only meant to be politicians who have power in the UN. Now we have this institution of money men, businessmen, moving in to sign a covenant and contract that's going to influence it. People watching it actually at the time said a, it was a coup for the corporate leaders at Davos to move in on the political institution of the UN. The UN is not the leading uh, um, entity that it used to be. It Things are changing in our world radically at this particular time. It's moving towards an increasingly privatized and less democratic global governance of our world. The UN actually relies heavily upon being financed by the businessmen that make up the World Economic Forum. It is vital to them. The UN relies on the finance of the WEF. At the heart of Schwab's revolution is an accelerating convergence between um, all areas of society. Listen to a quote from him here. A technological revolution that will fundamentally alter the way we live, we work, and we relate to one another. It's in a scale, a scope, and a complexity. It is the transformation 
will be unlike anything humankind has ever experienced before. We do not yet know just how it will unfold. But one thing is clear. The response to it must be integrated and comprehensive. In other words, what he is saying, it's got to be everything centralized and it's got to cover everything in our world. Again, quoting, involving all stakeholders of the global polity from the public and private sectors all the way through to academia and civil society. This fourth industrial revolution and it is a revolution is going to transform every single area of society economics politics education health system every single area this revolution that he's talking about and they're implementing it in a very real way is going to be global remember this is the institution that played out the entire scenario of this year just one year ago in October, way before the this COVID had broken out in Wuhan, way before anything had happened, they were talking all these things through, and we've seen it in the past year. I hope I've got your attention here at the minute. And this is only part one. I'll give you more important stuff in part two. So we see them joining together with the UN, or infiltrating in a political means. But what about the World Health Organization? Most of us didn't really notice it until March this year. On the 11th of March, the World Health Organization, or the WHO, declared COVID-19 a pandemic, 11th of March. The very next day, on the 12th of March, the World Economic Forum, acting as a partner to the World Health Organization, launched the COVID action platform. What was this new plan that they were launching? They said it was the first ever of its kind and it aimed to convene the business community for collective action, drawn all the businessmen in to come behind the the WHO to act in unison as one body. They were going to act to protect people's livelihoods and facilitate business continuance and mobilize support for COVID-19 response. The forum that they launched in March this year was a new community bringing together experts from the World Health Organization with business leaders from around the world which would hold regular virtual meetings, and they have done since March, to boost collaboration. Initially, they had 200 business leaders. Within two months, they had 700 of the top business world leaders, this is beginning in March, coming behind the World Health Organization. See now in our world, and since then, governments began to give billions of taxpayers' money to organizations like the World Economic Forum, as well as the Gates Foundation, billions of our tax uh, money. Well, it was in May the 4th that the European Union and several European governments held a COVID-19 donor convention or conference and pledged 7.4 billion euros of tax money towards this end. The money will be given to organizations like the World Economic Forum in a non-transparent way. And, do you know, previously for a long time, Bill, men like Bill Gates, they actually had to pay money and give money to governments to gain influence into these institutions. Now our world governments are paying men like Bill Gates and the World Economic Forum for them to operate in the midst of this. Let me bring you right down to something very contemporary. And this is what I want to leave you with. And this is my main thrust here. The Great Reset. What is the Great Reset? I believe it's very important that you know that. Because it's going to take place over the next year and a half. I fully believe that. On Wednesday, the 3rd of June, 2020, this year, just a few months ago, while the rest of the world was preoccupied with the pandemic, a looming global depression 
and by race rats that started in the US and spread around the major cities of our world. While everyone was focusing on these things, the World Economic Forum quietly announced the releasing of their Great Reset Initiative. You say, what is the Great Reset? I'm going to tell you. The announcement of the Great Reset Summit was made by the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles of the British Isles, and also by the World Economic Forum Chairman Klaus Schwab. Here he is again in the centre of this. And they released this agenda of the Great Reset during a, a virtual meeting. They actually gave several lectures involving world leaders and economy and world politics, all speaking about the vitalness of the Great Reset. The UN, the the um, International Monetary Forum, all of these groups came together to say, we are announcing the release of the Great Reset. None of us heard it at the time. None of us notice it as they're doing it. We are all focused on all of the smokescreen of everything else that is happening in our world. They began to release adverts and teaching and begin th to release their agenda there in June. Also in June 20, uh, uh, 2020, at that same time, uh, Schwab, our friend again, released his, another book called The Great Reset. And in that book, it explains what The Great Reset is. It is the world leader's radical plan to transform world economy. In other words, to reset or restart the world economy. And I will say more in the second message on this. He actually predicted in that book, that worldwide wealth redistribution at the end of COVID-19. He says in there that there's going to be an, a total rethinking and strengthen in, of governmental power. He talked that because of COVID, that the power of government is going to be intensified. The role is going to be extended in your life and my life. And that there be greater intervention by individual governments in all of our lives. In that book he says, the nation state isn't the best way to govern our world. We need a, a worldwide global government system in the hands of one centralized power. But he says at the minute all we have is local governments. But he is looking for a global government or for all the ability to respond to a crisis to be in the hands of one entity, one organization, one global institution that can respond. He also says in the Great Reset that in this world economic reset, the, the resetting of the world financial system this is what they're talking about. The same people who talked about the coronavirus one year ago and how they would respond to it. They're now talking through how they're going to restart the whole worldwide economic system. They talk about also increased taxation within each nation and that somehow they're going to redistribute the world's wealth in this time that's going to come. Well, <clears throat> They have plans for next year. They began in June to release plans for Davos in January 2020. What did they call it? The Great Reset. Do you know what they done from June this year? They activated or stirred up their network of nearly 10,000 global shapers in 428 cities of the world in 148 countries who were to be activated for the purpose of going out and finding a young generation who they can hand this master plan over to. They were looking for the high flyers, the rich, the young businessmen who are coming up through. They're looking for a young generation who are thinking, those who they can hand their ideas to, to a generation that they can mould in order to change our entire world. They wanted to implement their master plan called the Fourth Industrial Revolution. And how were they going to implement this new revolution that's going to merge the computer world with the realm, the biological realm of man? How are they going to do it? Through 
This initiative called the Great Reset, Prince Charles actually said, we only have a short time to do this. Those involved with this saying, we've got to act now. Never have we been handed such an opportunity. We're going to change the workplace, the schools. We're going to change every area of society from religion all the way through to world politics. And what better time? Our entire world this year has been shut down and never has it been more ready to be remoulded. The World Economic Forum's Great Reset is actually here and they're preparing to hold that. Just this month they've cancelled doing it in January and now moved it to late spring. There is an agenda, there is a plan and they're saying that this crisis that we're presently going through, you know Ireland just one week ago went into a second lockdown. If you break the law, you, you can be thrown in prison for six months or fined two and a half thousand euros. They're serious about what they are doing. Well, Clause actually goes on to say this is going to carry on for about a year and a half. It will gradually diminish in 2021 next year. And he predicted that maybe there would be another wave of corona next year, or maybe several, depending on what happens, before we t return to what they call normal. And yet they say we won't return to normal. Friends, I'm telling you something vital, and I've just laid very briefly the foundation here because of what I'm going to share with you in part two of what I believe is just about to happen. Since I'm showing you that so much of this year is a smokescreen and that there is a political, economic agenda about to be brought forth and birthed in our world in every single nation and it's not about COVID, it's not about the election in America it's not about China it's not even about socialism or the vaccine but this is the real agenda about to come forth and if you're a true born again believer then you know what the Bible predicts from I was a child I heard uh, preachers, pastors, Bible teachers teach accurately what the Bible taught that just before Jesus comes back there will be the rise of a political system that's going to be joined with the economic system that's going to be joined to a religious system and it will be global and it will make way for the rise of a man called the man of sin the Antichrist, who will be one of the greatest political leaders our world has ever seen. Friends, while the business world, the political world, and the social system is planning a global reset, we, the Church of Jesus Christ, need to preach the rebirth, the new birth once again to every sinner, to every man and woman. This is the last hour. These are the last moments of time. We are right in the midst of the fulfilling of Bible prophecy. This is not an hour like all others. You, you can't just say, well, it'll pass again. I know many have become skeptical about Bible prophecy, but be very careful. I believe we're actually at the hour of the fulfillment of so much. Much. It is time to pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We the church have lost the master plan that the church of Jesus Christ is to be his witness, to preach the gospel in all the earth, to be a revived instrument in the hand of God, to make this world know that Jesus Christ is alive. And once we preach the gospel and return again, Oh, that God the Holy Ghost would reset things again in the church and that we would go back to the biblical pattern, the biblical order, back to be Christ being the foundation, the scriptures being our authority, the Holy Spirit being the power behind us accomplishing this, our one vision to evangelize the nations. Oh, that we would in the church have a, a reset and be gripped with a vision of God's plan in these last moments of time. God bless you here. I'll come back and share the Great Reset Part 2. And I'm condensing everything. I've got so much I could say. And we taught this to our church two months ago. But I just want to give you a little insight and make you aware of what is just about to happen in our world. I don't want you to be scared. I don't want you to have your eyes on that system, on any election, or on 
further shutdowns. There is something else happening. And we as Christians, we ought not to fear. Because our Christ, the Holy Spirit in the Bible, predicted accurately what was going to happen. This is our greatest hour. If you have wisdom, you're going to run with this gospel like never before. This is our last hour, our last opportunity to gather souls to the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray this will stir your heart and challenge you to look heavenwards, to look to Jesus Christ, to realize that we are living in a remarkable era. God bless you.